I love fabric. I love all kinds of fabric, but my absolute most favorite kind of fabric is fabric I have dyed myself. Now there are a lot of ways you can get color on fabric. You can get uh, commercial dyes that you will have to process in certain ways. And then by doing that, you can throw that particular fabric in the washer and dryer, no problem. So that is not what I'm going to show you today. These are items that you maybe have already out in your studio, different things you might use for mixed media, but these are all things that I use to get color on fabric and I use them in my art projects in my, and in my books. So let's take a look at 10 different ways you can get color on fabric and then we will also take a look at which ones are going to move with water and which ones might be a little bit more permanent. Again, that doesn't really matter to me for the uses that I am doing them to use in books and in art, but it might matter to you. And if you stick around to the very end, I have a show and tell using my favorite way to get color on fabric with some really bright and beautiful results. So here are the 10 things that I am going to try on fabric. I'm going to use some cotton muslin. I'm going to use some cotton gauze. And then I've got some of that strange fibers that you get from the dollar store around Halloween time. Now the method on all of these is pretty much the same and the video cut out after I had done three of them. So you get the idea. I sometimes will wet the fabric first. Sometimes I will uh, put the, you know, drop the liquids on and then add water. And then I just kind of mush things around. One thing if you're using any kind of a patterned tray like I've got there and you spread out your fabric, you can also get some of that grid look um, kind of imprinted almost like an embossing into the fabric. And you just kind of play with it until the color looks like something you want, always keeping in mind that it's going to dry a little bit lighter. Normally when I do this for any of my projects, I'm working with like a fat quarter or a half a yard of fabric at a time, which really lets you, you know, really get things very saturated with the color. And then I like to, you'll see me kind of scrunch things up a little bit at the end because I like to put them out in the sun to dry. And if you scrunch them up, you're going to get some deeper lines, which you will see uh, once everything has been dried. So I go through all 10 um, different things to add the color. And then I put the trays out in the sun to dry. And I brought everything in and ironed them. And that's basically what you do. If you do not have these items on the shelf, take a look at what you do have on the shelf that you can use to get color. So what I decided to do to show you what would move and what wouldn't move is dampen everything a little bit rub it with a q-tip so you could see if the color was going to come off. I did not bother testing the acrylic fiber because it just really didn't seem like it was going to make that much of a difference in the scheme of things. And what I like to do with that fiber, the reason I wanted to dye some of that, is if you don't have wool roving, that uh, acrylic fiber that you can get at the dollar store around Halloween time, it can make a nice substitute. You just have to kind of pull it apart after you dye it and you can get it kind of fluffy. So you'll see uh, some of the ones were a little bit of a surprise. I was surprised that uh, the walnut ink and the alcohol ink did move around a little bit with water, but I do know from previous experience that if you let those dry and maybe they have to cure a little bit, um, they don't tend to move uh, around really after a time. Alcohol ink I know is not considered to be color fast, but I'm using all of this fabric is not anything I'm going to use, you know, for clothing. I'm using it for art and they're going to go in my books and they're not going to be out in the sun. So it just depends on what you want to use the fabric for. There's a lot of options available to get color on fabric. And of course there's fabric paints, which are a lot of fun to use. And that's another whole video. This is just to kind of give you some ideas and you know, what you can expect. If you're not going to be, you know, saturating your fabric in, you know, wet glue like Mod Podge or Matte Medium, you can use anything and get some really great effects. You just have to experiment. Don't be afraid to experiment. And like I said, it's, if you use the larger pieces of fabric, you can, you know, scrunch everything up and get some really neat lines like you can see there. Oh, and I forgot to mention earlier, I did put a piece of deli paper uh, down on my trays when I first started putting the color down because I really, um, anything that's going to soak through, I'm going to get another piece of collage fodder with the colors that go underneath there. And I just keep reusing those until they're full up and then they get really yummy.
So here we have a little breakdown on how each of the 10 items did when we added a little bit of water to them. And my favorite did not let me down. I absolutely love using the Bombay India ink. That is my favorite. And if you stick around here for just a few more seconds, I will show you some fabulous colored fabrics that I did with a recent dyeing session just using my Bombay India ink and water. And I tell you what, those fabrics come out so super yummy and they're the ones that you see me using probably most often in my books. So how did your favorite art supply do when I put it on the fabric? You know, really, you can use anything. You absolutely can. It just depends on what you're going to do with the fabric after you've got the color on it. If you're just going to put it in a journal or a just because book or an, uh, some kind of an art project, most likely you can get away with using anything you want to get color on the fabric. The only time you have to be concerned is if you're going to be using it um, for something that you're going to want to throw in the washing machine, or throw in the dryer, and be careful, of course, if you're doing anything around young children uh, that they might be likely to put something into their mouth and have the, the um, color you know, transfer, which would not be good. But really, you know, just have fun with it. Um, alcohol inks, you're not going to get the bloom that you're going to get when you use it on a non-porous surface, but you can um, kind of squeeze some alcohol in your fabric and you get a little bit of the bloom. That'll help get, a, get rid of just those solid circles that you get otherwise. Distress sprays are fun to use on fabric and they stay, the fabric stays pretty soft when you do that. Uh, what's really fun with the distress sprays is to mix them, you know, mix the colors up because then you get that wonderful distress spray, you know, color blooming, you know, you never know what color is going to come out next. But really, you know, you can use anything. I use watercolors a lot on fabric because they're just going to go in a book and they're going to last a long time like that. All right, so let's take a look at some of the things I've dyed recently with my absolute favorite, which is the Bombay India ink. Aren't these yummy? Absolutely fabulous colors. And this is all from the Bombay India ink. I wet the fabric. I, you know, kind of have a bowl of water usually next to me when I'm doing these. And I just soak the fabric and then I squirt whatever colors I want on there. And I do just like you saw me do in the video. I just scrunch everything up. And then you get these really wonderful dark lines if you let things dry when they're all scrunched up and you're gonna get just some wonderful colors and streaks. I don't iron my fabric before I dye it because I want those wrinkles in the fabric. This is some sheer um, organza. Actually, it's probably polyester even. Um, that's what's really cool about the India ink is you can use it on anything, but look at, look at those wonderful colors. This is, was like a curtain that I got at the thrift store and I am just so thrilled with this. I'm gonna have to probably do some more of this. Look at this blue. Oh. And this is what I was talking about on the metal trays. Those are just dollar store trays and you can get this imprint from the trays on them. So, you know, have a play with your favorite, with items you already have on the shelf. And then if, you know, if you want to try the Bombay India ink, I highly recommend it. This was uh, the Tim Holtz fabric, and I really wasn't using it like that, but look what happens when you use the back side. You get a little bit of the pattern coming through. This was some acrylic lace. This was a uh, table runner that was kind of a brocade, and I just really, the color wasn't working for me. It was like a bright orange, but now it works really nice in this kind of a uh, burgundy, I guess. Some more blue some cheesecloth. Can never have too much dyed cheesecloth, right? Look at the doily. Oh my goodness. Love this. And again, all of this here that I'm showing you in all the colors is all with the India ink. You know, so you get some nice big pieces like this. And this is still not super stiff. So it's not going to get in the way of, you know, trying to stitch on it. You could put your sewing machine, you know, put it through your sewing machine is fine. This says sunshine. Just really happy with this. Really happy. So happy that I might have to do some more of this tomorrow. 
So these are going to go into a lot more Just Because books and other fabric books because they make me happy. This is uh, acrylic doilies, so the India ink does a really good job on that. Again, some more Tim Holtz fabric. You can use either side. This didn't take so well, but it did, did darken a little bit, so I might still go ahead and use that. So this has got a pattern on this side, but the back side is great. Some more lace. So it's a good way to use up fabric that uh, you're not so crazy about. So let me know some of your favorite ways to get color on fabric. This is another part of one of those curtains. These just are amazing colors on here. You know, and if you don't have any of this other stuff in your supplies, well, just, you know, get some cheap craft paint and paint it on. Just paint it like you would a piece of paper. And the India inks, you know, you can water them down even more, and the pigment seems to stay very nicely. So let me know what you're doing to get color on your fabric, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye for now.